maybe 20% of people saying that, oh, of course, everyone knows what recursion schemes are and uh, it's the first thing you learn. But then the 80% of the people said what? Uh, so I decided to make a talk. Uh, so in general, when you write recursive data types and recursive structures, oh, and do please interrupt me if something isn't clear, uh, or if I'm covering the screen with myself. Um, yeah, you cover yeah, the screen a bit. <laughs> so in general, when you when we write recursive data types, we write them like this, right? So we encode the recursion in the constructor, and we say for this very simple data constructor that is a very basic AST, uh, we could say that the add and the duplication can have different expressions inside of them, and uh, that's how we encode recursion. And it works pretty well in many cases. And if we wanted to write a 3D printer for the ASV, we would write it like that. So for the add constructor, we convert both sides, we, we recurse inside, and then add them with a string. For the cons, we can show it, since it's an int. Uh, and we get the ASV printer. Uh, however, um, we can do better with recursion schemes. And the first step there is to modify our initial data type uh, so that the recursive position is generic now, so we can have any type here on these positions. But does this actually get us anywhere? Because um, to do that, we have to uh, go a level down and check if this is a factor. So, uh, a functor is defined like that, so we need an fmap function that abides by the functor laws. Uh, and so we can define an fmap function like that. So for the constant element, we just get, we just get the constant element itself. For the add and multiplication, we recur inside um, with, with our function. So why is there no type application, I mean no f application here? That's because uh, f is a general function from A to B and uh, that is always int. So we wouldn't get the types to match up or we would constrain ourselves on the f. So that's why there's no f here. Okay, so we know that's the factor. We know that uh, we did a weird thing to our uh, data type. So let's just check if we abide by the factor laws. So the identity law is basically trivial. We just put uh, identity for f and we get the right side immediately. So identity of a and a, so we get, we get the same thing. And for the composition, we compose the functions and we see up here that we can just take the f out uh, according to, to this. So we take it out and we're left with G, we take G out and we have the second law proof. Uh, so this is a factor. Uh, we don't have to do it, obviously, because we can derive it with GHC, but it's, it's a good exercise, I think. Uh, in any case, we have this type. Uh, looks fancy, but this is actually get us anywhere, because if we uh, do the const to the type is expression f of a, but if we do the addition of two consts, I was expression f of expression f of a, so it looks like in order to actually do anything with that stuff, we would need a series, an infinite, in general, uh, amount of functions that can act on arbitrarily nested expressions of x, which doesn't get us anywhere. Uh, I guess we could do it with template Haskell, but uh, there is another way. So we can define a fixed point. In general, a fixed point of a function is a value for which that function uh, which the function doesn't change. So for our for a functor, a fixed point is that, or the next line is it's obviously the same thing. We just name the uh, function and that allows you to take some out of the fixed point. So the fixed point uh, is a constructor that takes a functor that then has a fixed point as its uh, as its type parameter. Uh, so why is that a fixed point? Why isn't it changed? Well, we can wrap it again inside another fix. So we can do a fix of fix, which gets us here. So that was our initial fix point. We wrapped it again. Uh, but this is exactly the same 
because there is an infinite chain and unwrap it again and again and again and again. So if we add one more wrapping into an infinite chain of chain of wrapping, we get an infinite chain of wrapping. So it's the same thing. We can wrap it as many times as we want since it's already infinite. Um, does this help? I mean, uh, doesn't help on the first sight, but say we have an ASD like that. So we add two to two and then multiply everything by two. Okay, so we can uh, do the naive thing, the most obvious thing, and we can uh, uh, take our cons two and wrap it with a fixed point. So if we do that, we tie this fixed point of expression of f, uh, and we can take our whole expression and wrap it, the individual parts in the fixed point as well. So here is a the thing that we already know how to wrap. So we we get we get another of those and we add those together. And then we wrap the whole add, and then we wrap the multiplication, and we get the fixed expression. And if we check the type, the types actually are the same. So it suggests we can somehow build a function that acts on both of these in, in the same manner. Uh, so we can make somehow take those fixed points and make them do something for us. Uh, what could that be? Well, uh, the standard thing we do in programming is holding. Uh, so let's take an algebra. It's a function that uh, transforms a functor to the, the value, uh, so it somehow unwraps from the functor. Uh, so an algebra for creative printing uh, would be that. Well, for that AST, uh, AST at least. So for our uh, int, we show it. And for our additions and multiplications, we take the left part, we take the right part, and we compose them with some strings. Uh, the curious thing is that there is no recursion here, right? So this just takes a string and adds it to a string. So somehow we got rid of that recursion, but we don't know how yet. Uh, in order to get rid of that recursion, we have to abstract it somewhere, so we need something that walks that fixed point uh, tree, uh, and that's a catamorphism. So if we apply a catamorphism to our printing fun uh, function then on our ASD, we get a nicely printed ASD. So what does the catamorphism do? Well, it goes in and it unwraps uh, the first wrapping, so it, it takes a fixed point out with the out end. And an f maps inside the uh, our functor uh, with the catamorphism itself, and then it applies a function. So when it f maps inside the catamorphism, like do it like that, please. Yeah. So it, when it f maps inside the catamorphism, it goes in here and applies a catamorphism. So it again unwraps the fixed point, then it un again goes inside and unwraps the fixed point, and the f map of the constant element is a constant among itself. So it applies our function, that's our function for the constant element, we get the integer as a string. So this becomes a string, this becomes a string, and now add has the two parameters that get passed to it as string, so it can concatenate those strings. And it goes up and it wraps it all up into one single string value, and we never actually have to define the recursion ourselves. The only thing that we have to do is say what happens to uh, to each of the elements. Um, so this type, you might ask, why is that a string? Can't it be anything else? Well, it can be anything else. But this is a called a carrier type. And here, and it's completely arbitrary. It's just what we want our output to be. So we might want to get the value of that expression that this AST represents. Uh, and we can we have the same catamorphism uh, and we apply it to our get value function that <coughs> defines those operations mathematically and we get eight uh, because there were brackets so there's no mistake uh, anyhow so uh, we uh, now have that tree folding uh, uh, walking of of the tree defined somewhere else, uh, we can be reasonably sure it is correct, and the only thing that where we can make a mistake is 
in that expansion that actually walks the tree. So we only have to define what happens to a single element. Uh, well, we can fold, uh, but that's called recurrent schemes. So uh, we'll walk through two more so that you can see that we can separate the, the logic of walking the tree from the logic of what's happening to an element. So we, we can fold, we can unfold. So we can take the, uh, the element of the type and wrap it in the functor with a co-algebra. So our co-algebra for uh, generating these ASTs of adds and multiplications would be that. Uh, uh, that's completely arbitrary. I just did it like that. Uh, we can have any function in here. So if i is smaller than 4, we, we add and otherwise we just terminate. Uh, so our pattern organism is defined like that. So we un unwrap, we go in, and then we apply the function. So the arrows here are reversed. Uh, from algebra to co-algebra. So, in here, maybe let's try it in the E thing and just let's reverse the functions, right? So, it turns out that if we reverse the functions, so instead of unwrapping at the beginning, we wrap it at the end and then we apply the function at the beginning, uh, the types match up. So, if we write this and ask GHC to give us the type, we uh, get the this type. So, this looks okay because we get our co-algebra in here, we get the starting element, and we get the fixed one. Uh, so let's try running it. So if we do unmorphism unmark one, uh, we get an error because we have no show instance, but we already know how to show the tree. We can apply the catamorphism. Uh, so we can get the sentence and apply a catamorphism, and we get a pre-printed tree that was generated by the co -algebra. Uh, so it works, we can unfold with that scheme as well. Uh, and in many cases, we also, when we walk an AC, we want the access to the original element at that place. Uh, I mean, we could technically, in some cases, parse the element, with, like what we see, so let's say the string of hyperpolitization gets the element, but most of the times it doesn't have all the metadata and it's just ridiculous. I mean, this, it just removes all the advantages that we should see with that scheme. Uh, but we can uh, we can do something about it. We can define something called an error algebra, which is just like an algebra. So the algebra was f uh, of a to a, but it also carries that fixed point. So that's the value at the given level of the tree. Uh, so it's defined very similar to the algebra, so we unwrap, we fmap something on each of the elements, and then we apply our function. Uh, so that's the function that we've passed. Uh, so the thing that we do on each of the elements is slightly different in the sense that we, we do uh, the thing that we did for the algebra, but we also retain the element, uh, the original. Uh, so how do we use it? Well, we define a function like that, that uh, for adds, it adds them all up, and for the multiplications, it just carries them along as a string and uh, to get the printed printed value. So for adds, we, well, for consts, we show them. For adds, we go in with a catamorphism, we get the value as an integer, we add those two for the left and for the right side, we convert them to the string, and for the multiplication, we just take the strings that we have and we concatenate them together. So we get four times two as a string. Uh, so now no one can be mistaken what the difference is. Um, so these examples were pretty, uh, well, minimal. I mean, this one is as well, but it's in some way, I guess, more real world. Uh, so the idea here is that if we look at the problem the right way and we choose the right uh, re requires a data structure, the problem itself can become trivial. Uh, so here we have a square that looks like a rectangle because I chose the wrong font. Uh, but say we have a square and we want to turn it right 90 degrees. So uh, the rows become columns, so the 
the first uh, row from the bottom becomes the first column, the second becomes the second column, and so on and so forth. So we turn it around the 90 degrees. And it turns out that if we do it using quad trees, uh, the whole thing is super, super simple. So we can define a quad tree. The quad tree has a node that has four elements, it has the leaves, and it has the empty constructor just to be sure. Again, uh, our recursion is defined uh, generically, so we can put anything in here, so it's not a matter of what tree, it's, it's a whatever. And we define a helper type, so that, that's the fixed point wrapped quad tree is, is that, so we wrap it in a quad tree. And you know, the fixed point. And we define some helper functions that aren't really needed for, uh, just here for the sake of completeness. So in order to define a node, we uh, we define the upper left, upper right, and so on elements, and we wrap it in a fixed point. Same for the leaf, we wrap it in a fixed point, and the empty constructor wrap it in a fixed point. <coughs> uh, so that square over here, if we define it with that scheme, the upper left uh, quadrants will be this, and so on and so forth. And we can define a catamorphism that rotates. Um, so we can define an algebra that we pass to a catamorphism that rotates it. How do we do it? We, we, if we see, so the way we define that here is upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right. So in that scheme, we uh, define the rotation as, as a shift to the right of, of the children with a wraparound. So the, the right most goes to the left, left most position. And if we apply it recursively, so we ship those four squares or big squares around, and then ship inside each of the four squares around, uh, with a catamorphism, we get it rotated. So, so the first row becomes the first column, the second becomes the second column, so this is rotated 90 degrees to the right. Uh, and the, the beauty of that is that we just have to define a generic uh, or a general operation of rotation of each of the elements, and we didn't have to define the recursion at all. This was all done for us with kind of uh, So why would we use the recursion schemes? For me, the biggest reason is it's clear what's happening to the individual elements. Uh, and sometimes for some problems, not all of them, but some of the problems, it's easier to reason about them. Uh, I think the more sleep historical reasons, or if your benchmark proves it to be the case reasons, is that um, functions defined with recursion schemes are faster, uh, because GHC is better, or it used to be better at uh, optimizing the recursive, non-recursive code than recursive code. Uh, I'm saying used to be, I've run a couple of benchmarks and um, the results are basically the same in a sense that sometimes recursion schemes are maybe 20% faster than non-recursion schemes code. Uh, probably if your uh, if your code does a lot inside, uh, so your algebra or your function that works a tree, that's more the case that you might see some speed up. But I, I don't actually see any uh, uh, meaningful speed up in in, in the benchmark set, right? Uh, and assuming that everyone knows these functions, uh, I mean, there is a way more. Uh, so those are the three, I guess, most commonly used. Um, there's also the hylomorphism, which is uh, connecting the anamorphism and the catamorphism, and so on and so forth. Uh, most of those are defined in the recurrence schemes library. So assuming everyone knows these, uh, we would have a common ground to talk about how we're walking the tree and what we see while we're doing that. And also another, I think, nice point is that uh, there is a connection between, um, if only it's a kind of a connection in, in the structure, uh, in between the recurrent scheme, so the fixed point, and the free monad. So the fixed point is just the left side of the free monad. It doesn't have that pure part. So it has to, so the fixed point has to uh, uh, only terminate if the, the functor itself terminates. There is no recursion in the functor, but the free monad can terminate even if the functor itself doesn't terminate. So, 
Any questions? more of a remark. Uh, I think one of the one of the advantages of, of using recursion schemes is that you have all sorts of established properties that these recursion schemes have in relation to each other. And one such property, for example, is that you can easily combine two algebras into one algebra um, that sort of computes the, the yeah. product of the two things. And if you do that, then you still have what constitutes a single traversal that computes both values, rather than if you write the two things as separate recursive functions, you have two distinct traversals of a data structure. So um, if you want to exploit properties such as this, then I think that's one of the, the main reasons to, to use recursion schemes. <coughs> Okay, thanks.